Welcome fellow model routers to my next project and well you know what it is I don't need to tell you because you've already seen the thumbnail and the title. Here's our victim, I, I mean our patient, and here's the goodies we're going to stuff inside of it. Um, I've got an Econami, Soundtracks Econami, um, that I'm going to put inside this GP7. I've got a Nixtrax Decoder Buddy, there he is right there. I've got a Supersonic Mini a sugar cube speaker. I've got three enclosures here, so I'm going to try and make it a little bit deeper. And I've got a KA2 uh, from TCS that uh, oop, is on screen that I'm going to fit in there as well. So uh, to begin with, we need to cut into the patient. Okay, let's get these goodies out of the way and prepare the patient for operations. Oh, and I forgot the LEDs, they were underneath. I knew there was something underneath that. So to begin with, if you have never taken apart a GP7, this is an Atlas Cato uh, GP7. If you've never taken one apart before, um, here we go. If you have, don't pay any attention to the next uh, minute or two. So what I usually use is the backside of an X-Acto blade, and I usually pry it up. Now you see I've already pried up the handrails. Uh, this one was pre-broken, and I pry up this handrail uh, stanchion here, and the handrail here at the cab, and then I usually use a pair of tweezers to pull this one up. I don't try to take off these up here. And then on the other side, again using an X-Acto blade, and I just pry up like that and the tweezers you can use to pull that off. Next step, some people say to push in here on the back, there's a plastic tab that sticks down on the back. There's two tabs on the front. This one is very easy to break. And if you break it, your main method, I mean, it, the, the shell will just keep coming apart on you. I don't care what you do. I've, I know from experience. I've done many, many, many Atlas Kato's GP7s over the years. What I like to do is I squeeze up here on the front and then I just tip it or twist it. Okay, on. It'll come. If that doesn't work, you can try Oh, it was coming already. You can see it. <laughs> you can see the gap coming there. You can also tweet, squeeze it. There it goes, right there. And pull it up carefully. Make sure you don't break any handrails. The shell, we'll have to do some work with that later. And here's our chassis. Um, as with other decoder projects, I like to look at this as being done in stages. I guess you could say stage one is tearing things apart. Uh, taking the shell off, but really the way I look at it is there's three main stages. I've got to prepare the shell, I've got to prepare the chassis, and I have to stuff everything back together again. Uh, preparing the shell on this, you will see that there are two big light bars here, and what we're going to have to do is cut them back way back into here, and way back into here, and then Along with these light bars, there are these mounting tabs, one, two, three, four. Those are going to be in the way of the decoder. So let's get started. Um, normally, I would probably take the light bars out to do this work, but if you notice, I already have number boards on there. Uh, let's see if they come out. that doesn't work then we take a pair of plastic sprue cutters and reach down in there and go snip or snap do the same with these mounting pins
rear light is all set. I'll bring you back when the headlight is all set and uh, we're ready to install the LEDs in the shell. All right, both of our LEDs are wired up and now we're going to test it. This is a 9 volt battery and it has a uh, 1000 ohm resistor in line. All's good. Next step on the lighting project. I have two large pieces of heat shrink and what I'm going to do is slide over the headlight casting like that get it on there good and snug it might be a little bit too long and that's the headlight so I want the white wire and I'm going to snuff that up in there like that And I just realized you're not seeing this. Way to go. And then heat up the heat shrink. Watch out for the <laughs> watch out for the shell. Don't get the shell too hot. So I want the tubing to shrink around both the LED and the headlight casting. And not puncture a hole in the uh, heat shrink. I don't think it's tight enough for the uh, LED yet. Alright. I think that's tight enough. Let's just check. It feels like it's a little bit loose on the uh, on the headlight casting. Are you catching this in the camera? Try it again. That's pretty good. Uh, one thing I wasn't very careful about on the back light, the rear headlight, is that I didn't leave very much for the uh, heat shrink to mold around. Um, before I go any further, I'm going to test this. Red is going to go on the blue, red to blue, and black to white. Got the blue, got the white, and you can see the light there. backsplash on that one but that's not a bad idea it's not bad um, if we were working with one of the engines that have open fans in the back that light coming through the back would be a problem but at this point I think we're all set with the shell I do need to wire up the 
um, lights, but I'm going to wait on that until we have the decoder buddy in place on the chassis. So let's get the shell out of the way. Let's get the shell out of here. And the chassis is now on the operating table. Let's begin. We're going to have to get rid of the light board. So let's cut the wires here. Remove the board. Well, I guess I've got to take these tabs out here too. Got to get these metal tabs out of here. Somehow. Let's try taking these out. Like that. And this one doesn't want to come out because the tabs are there. Cool. I can do this. So you're going to fight me all the way? I guess so. Yeah. Finally, the light bar's out of the way. Now, this is the front of the locomotive. I usually work with the front to the right. Let's turn it around. So this is the front of the locomotive. Um, red is going to be on the right. Black is going to be on the left. So I have to... I'm going to have to stretch these wires a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of red. trains right there open up the package oops don't rip it whatever you do don't rip the package
so there's our Dakota buddy. You can see we have track pickup, track pickup left and right, and those are speaker left and right. And then on this end we have this is a, a daughter board here, and this will allow us to hook up a uh, the keep alive and the come on um, headlight wires. Oh no, just the headlight wires. That's right. Sorry, not the keep alive. Silly me. The keep alive wires to here. Okay. So these are track pickups. And uh, yeah. All we need to do is, oh, we, we need to wire up the motor too. Don't forget the motor wires, motor leads. So I need to cut back these clips on top of the motor. Again, plastic nippers here. Very scientific, you have to get exactly the right height. Right there. And uh, now let's get these motor leads taken care of before I go too much further. I'll cut this one, excuse me. This one I'm gonna cut off back there. Ah, I got that one cut. These wire nippers I'm using are have a lot of uh, nicks and dents in them, so they don't cut very well on this flat stock. Now, let me see if I remember this correct. If I want to stick with the wiring convention, it's going to be orange and gray. And I think the orange lead goes to the bottom and the gray lead goes to the top, if I remember correctly. There we go. Now, did I say gray top, orange bottom? Hope so. Gray top. Give it a tug. Orange to the bottom lead. There we go. Before I continue, there was a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, before you go any further, it would be a good idea if the locomotive hasn't been run in a while to add some grease or oil, uh, oil to the bearing surfaces. I used uh, label number 107 on the bearings on the ends here, the bearings on the motor, and there's a bearing right there, at the end of the worm gear. And then I used some uh, Hobby Lube is Woodland Scenics, uh, number uh, 655 on the worm gears and run it for a few minutes. I should have done that before I took the uh, light board off the top. And another thing is, would be a good idea to do before you take it apart is to clean the wheels. Uh, I have done, I had done a lot of weathering to this engine and there was a lot of crud on the wheels. Okay, that out of the way. 
I have put some sticky stuff here. This is um, Larry Puckett told me about this stuff. Uh, he tells everybody about it. He uses it for his decoder installations. If you haven't seen Larry Puckett's YouTube videos, check him out. He's got a lot of really nice information, really good stuff. And he does a lot of decoder installations as well. I'm going to put some Uhu right there. And I'm going to mount the decoder buddy about like that. And I'm just going to push it down into the Uhu stuff. I think I'm going to flatten this just a little bit more. Sticking up a little bit more than I would like. I'd like is for it to be thicker on the edges and thin in the middle. Does that make sense? And then what I will do eventually is I will Push it down into that. I will put some Kapton tape over the decoder and the decoder buddy once we get all that stuff done. Now I need to decide I want to have this go to the motor right there. Uh, what am I going to do with the orange lead? Am I going to run it underneath or over the top? And Alright, at this point, we have track wires connected, let's get this black thing out of here, track wires connected, motor connected, we don't have a decoder. We could test out the connections by putting our economy in there. Alright, make sure I have it connected correctly. Um, I like to test everything out each step of the way. So as soon as I have the decoder ready to hook up, I want to get it in and test it. No sound, just the decoder going back and forth. If I can get the plugs to line up. Come on. There we go. Alright, as you can see, we have the LED on. It means it's getting juice. I have it in page mode, the uh, power cab. Looking for the decoder. So it's 
likes the decoder. Setup address, yeah, let's do that. Short address, I don't care. Nope. We're gonna set up the long address. And we want 1403, remember that? Cause I'll forget. Come on, come on, here we go. So 1403. Enter. Activate this one, yes. Uh, no, let's get out of this. escape okay so I'm set up to run 1403 it says the headlights on let's see if it goes forward uh, forward is gonna be right yes cool and being a good Atlas engine it's super quiet What's next? Uh, we need to hook up speakers and the Keep Alive. And then uh, the next step will be doing the, the headlights. So back over to the workbench. Okay, we have now to do the Keep Alive and the speaker. So let's get going. Let's tin the speaker. And the purple wire for the speaker. I usually try and tin it the other way, or hook it up the other direction. But let's be different today. Nope, didn't get it. Got it that time. And I try to hook the wire to the outside of the contact so as to avoid shorting it against the speaker. All right. Get a good contact, yes. Now, I just need to cut it in half. And then tin it. Now what I'm not sure of, you see I haven't put the back. All right, <laughs> I'll explain it to you. These are extension uh, baffles for the speaker enclosures that come with these supersonic mini packages. And I oftentimes can't use them. I don't have enough space. So being a cheapskate, I save them and use them on other projects and here I have mated three of them together which should give me a little bit more I think bass sound not sure but what I'm not sure of is whether this is going to fit and probably I'm getting a little bit optimistic let's let's just do two like that now we need to glue a piece of styrene to the base of it or the back of it whatever you want to call it and to do that I'm going to need some Ooh. Contact cement. I'm going to use Walther's goo. And just put a little thin bead around the outside edge. 
what I've been told is that these plastic enclosure material is impervious to plastic cement, so it's best to use contact cement like that. Make sure you don't get any in the inside. And since it's contact cement, I'm going to have to take that piece of plastic off and let it harden. There we go. So you need to set that aside for two minutes. <laughs> let go of my hand. Stop it. <laughs> You know it's going to stick to the tweezers now. Okay, uh, I need to tin these two wires and solder them to the decoder buddy board. So what do you think? Should we test it with the speaker in place first? We'll hook up the Keep Alive as well and test them together. My usual preference is to do one thing at a time. Got it. Okay. Keep alive over there. Turn it around. Keep alive is here. Now I need to connect it to where's my wire diagram? Don't know if you can see it. No, you can't. It's not on camera. Let's bring this in a little bit closer. Alright. We need to attach it to either of those two U pluses, not both, and the ground. So I have to go blue and black right there. And that's not the W, it's that one there, and that one there, or that one, and that one. Okay. I'm going to go, I usually go with these two here. And the blue goes to the U plus, so the blue goes there blue goes there right there and it'll be a lot easier if it doesn't fight me okay All right, now we have a loose speaker and a loose keep alive. And we will tie those down before we finish up, obviously. What I will do is put double-sided tape for each of them. But right now, I wanna go test this baby. Let's go play. Hey, guess what? We have noise. No bell. Oh, I haven't got the right engine. Uh, what was it? 1403? Let's try that. We have a bell. We have a horn. And... So it goes forward when I say forward, backward when I say backwards. Now we'll do sound programming later. Uh, 
Well, that was pretty rude of my phone to stop working last night. Sorry about that. I ran out of battery, and I ran out of storage space, so it had a good reason to stop. Uh, I was just about to test the Keep Alive, and um, yes, it works. You have to take my word for it, otherwise I wouldn't have it in there right now. So, what's left to do? Well, just the headlights. So, let's get them hooked up. I see that blue wire is almost long enough. That'll work. This blue wire is none too long. The yellow wire is none too long. The white wire is way too short, too long. So let's shorten the white wire a little bit. And then we'll talk about where these wires go. Now, according to the diagram on the Dakota Buddy, here we are. So, the blue wires can go to there. This is the headlight right there on that corner, and that's the backup headlight right there, um, the negative. So headlight negative, backup light negative, and I think any of these in here are blue. Yes. Oh no, wait. What? 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. So white here, yellow here, and blue along the top. I need to tin those tabs before I solder to them. Okay, now uh, you'll also notice that I taped the decoder down and decoder buddy with Kapton. I've got some double sided tape here for the Keep Alive, and I've got double sided tape back on the speaker. Let's slide the shell on top and give it a test run. Maybe the battery won't go dead this time. <laughs> the white wire doesn't want to get up. Get up in there. All right, I'm going to fight with this later, off camera. Okay, we have our working headlight. How about the reverse light? Hey. Mm. 
Now, I have some final assembly work to do. As you can see, what I call wire management issues. I've got a wire, one of the pickup wires is sticking out down here. So I've got a little bit more work to do to finesse the shell and the chassis together. And then we have some uh, CVs to set. All right, let's uh, set some CVs here so they make more sense. So first of all, we have the right prime mover. That's a 567. And let's just get into program mode here. Is it showing up? Program on the program track, yes. And I want to program CVs, number two. What CV do I want to start with? Well, first of all, I like to put some uh, momentum. So I'm going to set CV3 to 40. And I want to put 40 in there. And that's uh, momentum on acceleration. And CV4 is on deceleration. And I like that to be a little bit less. Actually, half it. Oh, whoa. CV4 to 20. Now, let's do the horn. The volumes, yeah, we can mess with that too. First thing I need to come up with is a horn. Is that a Wabco A2? Let's see, number 120 is the air horn CV. And right now it's set for number one, a KL, K5LA. No. No, number one, K5LLA. No. I think it's a Wabco A2. I'm going to try eight. Now, another thing I like to do is uh, program a little bit of brake squeal. So I want 196 to 5. 196. Set that to 5. And then 198 to 12. Number 198. Enter. I want that to be 12. Uh, there's a brake squeal volume is um, 139, and I don't like the brake squeal to be annoying, so I like to put it down pretty low. Come on, I'm waiting. Oh, there we go, 100. Um, I think I've been putting it around 20. And did I set the Wabco? Yes, I did. Let's get out of program mode and see what happens with the horn. Set the horn. Guess not. Still a five chime. <laughs> oh, the bell. A little bit of squeak. Now let's try the horn again. Program on the program track, enter. CVs are two. I want to go to number 120 to change the air horn. And I want to go to number eight. Try it again. <laughs> Boy, that sounds kind of weak, doesn't it? How about a Wabco E2? That's a CV120. I'll try it. Oh, 
number seven. Oh, I thought the other one was bad. <laughs> oh, how about a Le Leslie A200? I don't know what those are supposed to be on there. I did have single chime horns, so I'm sticking with the single chime horns. Uh, Leslie A200 is number 11. Yeah, I guess that's uh, that's in the Leslie A125, and that's a uh, value of number 12. Okay. So at this point, she's, uh, I think, done. I didn't mention to you one of the ways that I took care of the wiring issue in the back, the wire management issue. I used Kapton tape to hold the speaker down, and I wrapped the tape around the, the uh, pickup wires from the truck. That was what the, was in the way of the shell coming down. I don't know about the volumes. bad volume for the horn. The bell's a little loud for my ear, but personal preference, whatever you like. Well, I guess that's it for this one. She's ready to go on the layout and uh, just some minor adjustments maybe to volume. And uh, yeah, I hope you like the video. Uh, remember, I do this to promote the hobby of model railroading. I do it for your benefit, for the benefit of other model railroaders, and to promote the hobby. I don't do this for money, I'm not monetized. So if you do like the video, if you have suggestions or questions, maybe something you'd like me to do, please leave a comment down below. And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button too. 